Yo. Yo, what's up, everybody? Narwhal here representing Blue Collar Crypto. Welcome to the weekly podcast. It's been a crazy week. You know, our launch was just last week and things have gone really well, really exciting. I just want to uh, check in with Crypto G quickly, say hello, and we can get this thing moving. G, you here? Yo, hey, what's up, guys? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. I'll talk to you guys soon. All right, man. Good to go. So I want to kick this thing off by talking to you guys about something that we all know and love. I think we all know it. No, I don't even know if we all know. We all love it. Uh, Money. Money. That thing is money. So they say money can't buy you happiness, but I think it can help the process along. You know, you uh, if you have money, you can free up some time. And with that time and money, you can spend a lot of uh, time on things that make you happy with the people that you love. So, yeah, we're all here for the same purpose, you know, create some wealth. And uh, and here we go. Now, the thing about money is I'm not sure if we all even know what money is, especially traditionally. So money, realistically, is just something that we use in exchange for goods and services, you know, something I'll pay and get something in return um, as a form of currency. And traditionally, society has always had, um, you know, we the people have always had a trusted agreement on what we can use for money, what we can use as currency. Um, Historically, we've bartered and we've used things like cattle and goats and uh, shells, seashells. You know, many countries for many periods of time believe it or not, use seashells as currency. Um, Grains, uh, other livestock, um, leathers. So many, many different things we've used as money, um, which is is kind of unfathomable if you think that, you know, those things are, a lot of them are items that are replenishable, renewable, where you can continually have a supply of that, which kind of presented a problem at the time. So it worked initially where people were using these things as transactions, but it kind of made an inaccurate representation of wealth because someone could literally go sit down by the ocean and collect seashells all day and become an instant millionaire. But that's inaccurate because, you know, everybody can do that. And then all of a sudden they had a problem that we deal with today, and that is inflation. So believe it or not, back in the day, inflation was an issue because Inflation is simply when you take something and you inflate it, you make it bigger. So what we're inflating in this situation is money, the amount of money that's in circulation. So when you take that and you create an abundance of it, you're actually devaluing your money. Your buying power lessens. So as the items people were using for currency um, became more plentiful and more bountiful, everybody had them, they decreased their buying power. So it forced society to look at something else to use for money. So we actually turned to jewels and, you know, precious commodities, um, precious metals and silver, diamonds, gold ended up being being the main form of currency. It was used globally and people traded gold. People understood that gold was a universal asset. Um, but the problem was it wasn't with the gold itself because it was a limited resource that people had to to work to mine, so it it held its value. But people changed, society changed, society grew, and population grew. People became nomadic, and we traveled. And as we did that, gold just became too cumbersome, too too much of a pain in the arse for me to lug my gold from A to B to C to D to use as currency. And that's when the government, the monarchy, stepped in and created fiat currency the currency that you you grew up with that you know um you know the money that you stuffed in your piggy bank or your your mattress or you brought to the bank and and deposited that's fiat currency that tangible money that we we grew up on was um, it's from the latin word uh fiat which means um by decree so it's something that um is backed by force of law so the government made it something that they were legally backing and it became legal tender. This money um, became something that we literally were forced to use by the government, um, which is a centralized uh, agency. 
So this centralized form of, of banking uh, has posed many problems over the years and we're, we're starting to really see some of them now. Um, first of all, when they changed this money, counterfeiting was an issue, theft was an issue. Um, you know, it's something that can be lost, stolen easily. But it also had an issue where the government is able to simply create more money when they need and when they feel that more money needs to be in society, you know, pump more money into circulation to stimulate the economy. We're seeing that now. Um, we're in a real sorry state right now because of inflation. So as the money supply is, is increased, our buying power decreases. You probably have more money, or you, sorry, you don't probably, you may have more money now than you did in 2015, 2016, 2017, but you can buy less with it now. You have less buying power because your dollar value is worth less. Um, so it, it's it's very interesting. The only thing that's going to um, help us with that is if we find a way to take money from the central agency, AKA the government, um, to stop having government run funds and create something else that's not centralized. If we can have a decentralized form of currency that would be a game changer in our society. So it took a long time, but in 2008, we finally laid the groundwork for something like that to change, to go to a decentralized currency. So we're gonna talk about that in a little bit, but let's check in with Crypto G and see what he has going on. What's up, G? Yo, what's up? Wow, that was really good. That was really, really good. It, I like that because it kind of reminds me a lot about how things are actually happening right now it, it helps because we think when there's inflation we kind of think that um we should have more money like when we keep getting like when the lockdowns happen and they just dumped a bunch of money on us everything started going up like all the assets started going up well then like norwell crypto said you're buying power so now things became more expensive so sure, you have a lot more money, but things just cost a lot more to do, you know? So anyways, what I wanted to talk to you about today is finding that hedge. So we're trying to find something that isn't centralized that we can move our money into. And yes, we're talking about so many different things. And of course, we talk about crypto because we love crypto being decentralized. Now, is it too late? I hear everybody like, oh, I heard about Bitcoin when it was $3. I hear these stories all the time. Oh, I heard about Bitcoin when it was $100 and I should have bought some, I should have bought some. And that's it. They go back to putting their eight hours a day. It's not the way. There is a way and it's not too late. El Turco, can you run that video with a uh, roll, please? The risk reward is crypto because it's the only market that goes up 10, 20, 50 X. While the stock market may double, may, may go up 200% over the next five years, but crypto market does a lot more. So if your aim is to take risks to accumulate wealth, then crypto. I prefer crypto as a bet because I think it's better risk reward than other markets. Um, but you have to suffer these drawdowns and you know, a lot of crypto is down 60, 65%. But if you're less risk seeking, you might just want to buy equities. If you're slightly more risk seeking in equities, you might want to buy technology stocks because technology is not going away. I mean, the rise of everything from AI to robotics to um, EV to space travel to everything is all happening at the same time. We've got this huge inflection point. So clearly, that's going to be something that's probably going to generate a lot of profits over time. So now we're in an accumulation phase. What? Is an accumulation phase i'm going to get more into that after uh, narwhal crypto goes on to tell you just a little bit more about bitcoin's history i'm going to start talking a little bit about how bitcoin is cyclical so it follows cycles and we're going to explain why we're in accumulation phase and what an accumulation phase is to put it B bcc style okay blue collar crypto style what accumulation phase means is from the rest of this year and all of 2023, this is your chance to start accumulating assets. Sure, we're into crypto assets, but other assets are still good because everything is on the bottom. And I'm going to get into that too. We buy red, we sell green. All right, more on that after. I just want you to see this little quick video. El Turco, I know I sent you that video 
a little late today, but hopefully it's working. I just want to see you guys see where we're trading when you see my little videos of doing the day trades. I'm trading in this little window of four hours that's just happening within this month. But if you zoom out, you'll see that we are nowhere close to where Bitcoin's all time high was. All right, play that video if you can. If I don't fade away, there's no video. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> you're, you're good. Sorry, guys. Enjoy my coffee. Um, anyway, uh, Bitcoin, like Crypto G just touched on. We're going to talk about that. But first, I have a question. Who is Satoshi Nakamoto? Because I have no idea who Satoshi Nakamoto is. Uh, you probably don't either. I don't know who he was or who she was. Um, or who they were, it could have been a group of people, but I do know that Satoshi Nakamoto was credited with producing the world's first peer-to-peer -peer network back in 2008. So um, in 08, peer-to-peer -peer was designed to trade currency that's not controlled by the government, to, con to trade a decentralized currency, which is in a weird way, what we've been waiting for without even knowing it. Um, and this is when Bitcoin was actually birthed. So to know about Bitcoin, you have to understand banks. Banks, as we know them, are centralized and they use um, a non-transparent ledger or non-transparent database. So that means that you can't take a peek at that currency or the history of that currency. You can't see you know, what's happened with that currency up until this point. You only see a snapshot, a glimpse of right now where that currency is. Um, you don't see any prior transactions, but Bitcoin actually is decentralized and it uses a, a transparent ledger, sorry, <clears throat> a transparent ledger, which the transparent ledger allows verification of the currency up to that point. So you can literally take a look at where that currency has been, the history of that currency up until this moment, which helps validate the whole transaction. It validates that currency and it, it just helps the system to validate that this transaction is is accurate, is legitimate. Um, it, everyone on the Bitcoin network can actually access the transparent ledger. So you can, you and I can see this, not just the banks. With a non-transparent ledger, only the banks can see that. Um, so that's a huge, huge difference. And it's something that really helps the peer-to-peer -peer network move. Um, it's a fundamental of that network. Now, Bitcoin, is one of the beauties of it is it's a scarce asset which means there will only ever be so much bitcoin produced and that number is 21 million there will never be more than 21 million bitcoin in existence at right now at this point in time we're roughly at 19.2 million bitcoin and you know that's incredible to think that we still have a little bit of a way to go before we've reached our cap but that's it. The window is closing and, and it's actually really exciting times coming up because, you know, Bitcoin is going to reach its its limit. Um, it'll never be overproduced, which is amazing. It's, again, it's not like our fiat currency where they can decide, well, you know, we need more of that in circulation. So let's just double Bitcoin. Let's just make 42 million Bitcoin. That'll never happen. So that's, that's what makes this whole system work. Um, it'll never be devalued by inflation. Bitcoin is a deflationary asset and its value will increase, not go the other way, the way fiat currency does. Um, another thing to know about Bitcoin, and it's, it's really, really cool, is that Bitcoin is the king. It's the king of all cryptocurrencies. It's the OG. It's the first currency on the market. It was the literally the one that started this whole thing. So um, all the other coins that are out there, they'll always be chasing and striving to be you know the biggest coin out there but realistically it'll be to be the biggest number two coin no one's going to catch bitcoin bitcoin is you know it's on the top of the food chain for a reason um so bitcoin is gold bitcoin is the crypto equivalent of gold we'll talk on altcoins later but all of these other coins are considered altcoins bitcoin is the coin bitcoin's the man the boss you know the top dog so keep that in mind when you know just in the back of your head when you're trading bitcoin is number one numero uno i can't i can't pump that fact enough um but we'll talk on outcoins in a bit let's uh see what crypto g is up to g yo 
What's up, guys? All right. Well, that was good. Now we kind of got a breakdown. And like he said, it's a scarce asset. So you can't produce it. You know, you can't make any more of it. And that'll just make the value go higher and higher every year. So watch out when that adoption is full on. Hopefully a lot of you already have some kind of uh, Bitcoin or crypto or some kind of crypto asset in your portfolio by that time, because it might be too late. So this is the time. And what we wanted to talk about again, I'm going to bring it up is the accumulation phase we're in. So like I said earlier, Bitcoin is cyclical. So it follows cycles. Now it never repeats but it always rhymes. Um, El Turco, can you put up that uh, Bitcoin? Yeah, that one. All right. I know we're going to go over charting and stuff like that as we go, but I kind of wanted you to see this. So do you see how, let's say in this halving in 2016, this was the bull run where we run all the price goes all the way up. Okay. And then after that, it dumps. Okay. When it dumps, that's the bear market. And then it accumulates. And you see that little bit of accumulation phase. I think it's over here <laughs> look at me not used to doing this opposite accumulation phase and then it comes back up again all right until the uh next having the having is every time it's about four years so it's every uh 210,000 blocks are mined okay and then what happens is the amount of bitcoin that the miners get which we'll explain mining in bitcoin later gets cut in half so then that value gets pushed back into the market when that happens roughly every four years, we get a bull run. And that means all the assets are gonna go flying up. And that means all the alt altcoins go flying up. All that money has to get put back into circulation. So every four years, we get this. Now, where are we now? If you kind of see behind me, oh, sorry, on this side, down here, we're in that accumulation phase, okay? I think it's on this side. We're in accumulation phase, if you can hear me on this side. And that's where we are, ish, okay? So we want to accumulate all the Bitcoin and assets we can 2023 and slowly going into 2024. If you accumulate now, I mean, Bitcoin right now is sitting just over 20,000. It's all time high was 69,000. So I believe that in, and this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. This is just for me charting and the experience I've had in the last couple of years of making money in this market. I believe that we can hit or break 150,000 per Bitcoin. And that's in 2024. So if you're on this channel, I really hope you're accumulating and learning to accumulate as we go. Um, can you pull up that other chart there, El Turco? It's the Wall Street cheat sheet. I just kind of wanted to explain how things go. So if you look at this cheat sheet, I guess I'd have to turn this way. <laughs> um we are in that depression phase okay right around here and we're kind of getting a little bit of a pump so we go into disbelief but we're going to go right back down into depression phase just because we're in the bear market again because of where the market is right now because of where inflation is we are not these little rallies you see me trading on and making day trades that's just little bumps there's little relief rallies that come on uh, bear markets all the time but that's not where we're going to hit that euphoric high you know so that's how they get us and i'm going to talk to you about that with the fear and greed index and why we buy red and we sell green all right i believe that's it let's go back to narwhal crypto and see what that northern whale is talking about hey man sorry i was getting a kick out of that i watched a blooper reel one time on uh, on the internet and it was a drunken weatherman and he's trying to point to the that's what you reminded me of so it was it was comical anyway sorry bro um i want to talk about altcoins uh what is an altcoin because you've heard the term uh so there are literally thousands of of different crypto coins out there right now on the market um so i want to explain to you what an altcoin is there are altcoins and the best way for me to explain it to you actually is I can tell you every coin that's not an altcoin. Okay, you ready? Bitcoin is not an altcoin. That's it. Every other coin is an altcoin. Like I stressed on earlier, Bitcoin is the number one coin. Everything else is an altcoin or an alternative coin, an alternative to Bitcoin. So what happened was when Bitcoin was introduced, um, it was so impressive and just the flawless setup of it was was so um 
overwhelming that other creators tried to improve on that. They wanted to, wow, this is so game changing, but can we can we improve on what Bitcoin has done? And they tried to come up with projects that are, you know, better, faster, smarter, faster transactions, smart contracts, but they always come up short to Bitcoin because it's just that far ahead of, of the next closest competitor. Um, basically, all of the rest are blanketed as number two um, and they can jockey for a position for that. But Bitcoin will always be the is now and will always be the dominant coin um, and everything else is an alternative to Bitcoin and altcoin. Um, and there are really impressive altcoins out there, coins you've heard of, you know, Ethereum, Litecoin, Cardano, Ripple, Polkadot, Dogecoin. But um, those are all altcoins and, you know, it's definitely something to be looked at when, when investing or hodling. But um, Bitcoin is the coin and everything else is an altcoin. I just wanted to get that out so you, you know simply what an altcoin is. Um, and another little indicator that, that you can always keep in mind is when Bitcoin dominance is down, um, that means that the money is flowing into altcoins. So just something to keep in mind when you, you know, when you start charting with Crypto G, um, you'll know that, that when, when Bitcoin dominance is down, it's, it's a good sign for altcoins. Uh, that's it on that altcoins. It's, uh, you know, it's pretty basic, but um, a lot of people don't know or, you know, what an altcoin is. So I wanted to touch on that. Uh, can we swing over back to Crypto G? Yo, yo. All right. Oh, look at that. El Turco. Good job. This guy was just about to ask him to put this, put this up and he put it up. All right. I want to talk to you about the fear and greed index. And I think at, especially in the bull run, it's the easiest way to know when to pull a trade and when to put in a trade because the easiest way to look at it is be greedy when others are fearful and be fearful when others are greedy and that's how the whales uh trade that's how the whales uh invest and manipulate the market you know we're not whales we're all retail investors i don't it doesn't matter if you're not an owner of a hedge fund you know and you're not sitting up there and loaning your your 10-year yield bonds to banks you're a retail investor like all of us so what they do to us and you'll see this a lot and this came up because i had a friend named ryan <laughs> and it's not ryan about the candles ryan with the candles i'm gonna get to you thank you for your comment we're gonna get back to that to the candles and i will explain it a little a little easier a little different put it that way um, but to the other Ryan that, uh, messaged me and, uh, thank you for subscribing. Yes. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button and hit us on all our socials. I know we're live right now on, uh, Instagram and Facebook. I just got word. We're not live right now on our YouTube channel, but we're definitely going to figure out what's going on there, but it's still live on those other two. So definitely hit that like and follow. All right. Fear and greed. So what happens? And I learned this the hard way cause I got involved in crypto right at the beginning of the bull run and i didn't know what a bull run was so i thought we made money like this all the time that's why i was so like oh my gosh everybody get involved here i keep making money i had no clue we're in a bull run but during that time when i learned how to futures trade i started chasing green candles and that means i started fomoing fomoing in <laughs> is that even a word so i would see a green candle and like everybody, because my buddy Ryan reminded me of this, I said, what did you buy? He said, I bought everything that was green. And I was like, ah, that's what I did. So we buy red, okay? You wanna buy red, but it's so against our human nature to buy something that resembles no success, right? We're trained that way. That's what the whales want us to do. So what I was doing was I was chasing green candles. So I was buying buying in on these uh trades and then what happens the whales dump it so then all of a sudden huge red candles so now all of us are selling off losing maybe breaking even but may most of the time losing our positions and we're selling it and now it's dumping 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 then what do the whales do they sold up here and drove that candle down and we chased it and sold now we've sold our all our positions we're at the bottom guess what they buy all of those low assets again and then they start running the price halfway up. Well, what do retail investors do? We see that. Oh, we start buying. Oh, it's going green. Buy it. Buy it. 
They're just waiting for us to drive it up. What are they going to do? They're going to sell it again at the top, drive it down. You guys get scared. We get scared. It comes down and then they start the process all over again. So that's why we have to trade and invest with the whales. So right now, if you look up the fear and greed index for crypto, it's pretty low. And like I said, we're in accumulation phase. It's going to stay low for a while. Sure, there's going to be these little dips, like I said, relief rallies. That just gives us an opportunity to trade and we'll get into that. You know, we'll get into that more. But hodling, which we're going to explain in my next, seg my, my next segment, the last segment, is the easiest and best way to make money. All right. So enough of the fear and greed index. Just remember, we buy red, we sell green. All right. Back to Narwhal Crypto for his last one. Thanks, Crypto G. I love that. Be fearful when others are greedy. It's sick. Um, anyhow, uh, thanks for touching on whales. I think that's uh, it's really important. I think because whales are so prominent and influential, it's it's important to learn from them. You know, um, just kind of watch what they're doing, what they're interested in, and, and maybe why they're interested in in that investment. So um, we're going to take a glance at different whales to to watch their movements, and that's why I'm going to bring to you weekly something that we call the whale watch that's our cue it's time so the whale we're going to watch today is michael saylor now you may have heard of him um if you didn't you will it's like you know, we, you, you don't ever see a certain car and someone mentions it. Now you see this car all the time. You're going to hear the name Michael Saylor a lot. Um, Michael Saylor is an MIT grad. Um, he was the CEO of MicroStrategy, multi-billion dollar company, a rocket scientist, billionaire. And he's a big whale in the Bitcoin game. He purchased uh, 17,000 Bitcoin for himself personally, another 121 plus thousand, I think 121,000 and change. Um, bitcoins not in dollars in bitcoin um for his company and uh yeah he's a he's a big big player um and he's actually credited for during a twitter conversation with elon musk for having a conversation from one rocket scientist to another and he became the catalyst to encourage elon musk to go all in with twitter on bitcoin and crypto so you know he's he's a very influential player a big big guy um, one thing I found interesting was he said his biggest regret as an investor, and he's invested in, in everything, you know, from real estate, um, currency bonds, he, he's done it all. Um, but he said his biggest regret was resisting the evolution of cryptocurrency, not getting in on it sooner. Um, so that being said, I have a, a little video, some, some words from, uh, from Michael Saylor. I'd like you guys to, to listen in on if El Turco, if we can kick that up. Here with Michael Saylor, one of my biggest inspirations in this crypto world. And I have one question for you. So I saw today that you're more bullish than ever on Bitcoin. What do you see for the future of cryptocurrency? And for beginners, how can they get started in this world? I think you're going to see um, crypto technology built into lots of more mobile apps and you're going to see an explosion in digital wallets that are holding Bitcoin and also stable coins. Mm -hmm. And increasingly, as Lightning rolls out, you're going to see websites and mobile apps build the protocol into all their offerings so that people can move money around at the speed of light, mm -hmm. cross border, everywhere. Right. Making it more accessible for everybody. Yeah, I think there's an explosion in, in accessibility to money. And I think also the pe people are getting frustrated. There are billions of people who can't get a bank account. And there are billions of people that want to move money on Saturday. And, and there are billions of people that want to move money between Africa and South America mm -hmm. and Asia and the U.S. And, you know, if I go to my pay app and I click send, you know, I get rejected a third of the time myself, even if I'm trying to send it to someone here in the United States. So. Right. So I think that uh, most of the world is thinking it ought to be fast and easy and ubiquitous and crypto technology lets me do it and 20th century technology doesn't. And lastly, for the beginners out there who are just getting into this world, smaller budget maybe, what could you say for them? I think the first thing to do is educate yourself. Education is free. You should, you should never invest money or do anything based upon a rumor or a whim or an urgency you should learn right this is a this is like electricity in 1900 
it's going to change the world and you might want to figure out how it works. Yeah, I agree. Thank you, Mr. Saylor. Yeah. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Lastly, um, before we close, I just wanted to explain what HODL is. I mean, everyone, I'm wearing a HODL shirt. You see HODL over here. You see that normal crypto? <laughs> Weather guy. I got it. I know it's right there. <laughs> All right. HODL was actually a typo in an uh, in investment. Uh, I think it was a memo or something. Anyways, it was a typo for hold, to hold on to the asset. And then the typo ended up being HODL. And everyone knows it as hold on for dear life. So what I want to explain is that there's two different ways to invest in crypto. You hodl, which is the easiest way to make money. Like I said, it's the accumulation phase. So if you have $50, you have $150, you have $1,500 a month to invest spare. Who knows? You accumulate. So you just buy assets that you think are going to do well in the next bull run. Obviously, you can get that info here. Again, not financial advice. This is just what we think is going to make us go to the next level in the next bull run. Now, um, you can hold and hope, not hope, I know. It's just that's how the runs go. You can hold and then wait for the assets to hit the top. And then you have to, now that's another thing is timing where the top is and then trying to cash out before the asset drops into the next uh, bear phase. But the other way, because some people don't have, oh, you crypto G, I don't got two Gs. I don't got 10 Gs to just buy assets when they're down and wait a year or two to uh, double, triple, whatever they're gonna do. You know, I need to build it. And that's what I had to do actually too. So you can trade so the other thing we're going to show you here is how to trade easiest way to just spot trade so even like now you'll see some of my videos where i'm trading when it goes up and down literally you can just buy bitcoin when it's at let's say nineteen thousand, and then it trickles up to twenty thousand five hundred. sell it off there when it comes back down because it's an accumulation phase it is going to go up and down and we'll explain how the trends do this in the accumulation phase and then you can just you'll just be accumulating more and more of that asset let's say it's bitcoin you'll be accumulating more and more each time you buy back if that makes sense because you keep selling it higher and keep buying it lower slowly your hodl is just going to get bigger now what we always suggest is after your spot trading like this let's say you make a hundred dollars profit we will suggest you put 33 percent into cash so you can buy assets when they're low or there's a dip in the market. We also want you to put 33% of that into your HODL. So that's your generational wealth. You're just gonna let that sit there. You're not spending that. That's just gonna sit in a cold storage and build for the next bull run. And then the rest you're gonna put in your spot wallet so you can still move and trade. And we're gonna get into that. So I just wanted to explain HODL, hold on for dear life. Just buy and hold is definitely the easiest way to make money when you're doing asset classes or crypto. All right. One last thing I want to touch on is El Turco. Can you pull up those, uh, those subs and, uh, those picks of our, uh, channels. There you go. So there's blue collar crypto. Look at that. I know we just started 21 subs isn't bad. So remember to hit that like, hit that subscribe. Um, we're going to figure out what happened. We'll probably reload the video of the uh, live that's happening right now um tonight at eight and there's the other one there's also follow crypto g and you can follow narwhal crypto both of us are there look at narwhal crypto has no subs everyone that listened today go onto that youtube channel hit that sub hit that subscribe get this guy i want this guy to have more videos than me by next week oh look at you got 99 views there that's not bad all right and then lastly put mine up everybody follow me please follow us both especially because I'm going to start getting into futures and leverage trading. That's exciting. A lot of money to be made there, especially in the bull run, but we'll learn now and get ready for the bull run. All right. Like I said, we're here every Monday. Sorry about today. Had some uh, technical di difficulties, but most Mondays, 9 PM on behalf of El Turco and uh, Narwhal Crypto. It's Crypto G. We're out. Thank you for tuning in to Blue Collar Crypto. Nice, El Turco. <laughs> <laughs>